G'day and welcome to part three of the systems of linear equations. Um, the, the first one was uh, looking at um, matrices as a way of uh, showing uh, linear equations. The second one was um, solving linear equations using matrices. The third one is looking at the three types of possibilities you can get with linear graphs. And I've got these three um, in some sketches down uh, the bottom here. So one po when you've got linear graphs, there's only three possibilities that could happen. One is that they cross each other at one unique uh, point, or we, we say one unique solution. So at one point, somewhere uh, along the line, um, it doesn't matter where it is, but they cross each other. This means that the gradient is not the same. The gradients are not the same. Right, gradients are not the same. So if if we've got our equation of a line, um, y equals m x plus c, and I'm going to call them m1 and c1, and y equals m2 and c2, so the, uh, on the first graph and on the second graph, we're saying that m1 does not equal m2. Okay, if the gradients are not the same, they'll cross each other once. The other, um, time, the other thing that can happen is that they actually never cross. Um, so, you know, they're, they're, we're, what we consider parallel. Okay, and noticed by these two lines here. So in this case, we actually say that the gradients are exactly the same. Gradients are the same. Excuse my poor handwriting. So again, if we've got y equals mx uh, plus c and y1, uh, m1, m2, you know, um, c1 and c2, that means that we actually say that m1 equals m2. The gradients are exactly the same. But I guess importantly, um, and the next one will kind of uh, dictate this as well, is that the y-intercepts are different. So the y-intercepts are not the same. Okay, so the, the gradients are exactly the same, but the y-intercepts are different. And the third time, um, you know, third thing that could happen is that they are actually the exact same line. Yeah, they have the exact same equation. So they are that cross once, they never cross because they're parallel. Um, or they're actually the exact same line and so when we're, you know, uh, these have the same gradient and same y-intercept. Same gradient and the same y-intercept. So if, if we were doing um, our y equals m mx plus c, we would say that m1 equals m2 and c1 equals c2 as well. Okay, so in order to work out, um, you know, what, uh, sorry, uh, the other thing I'll, I'll do is I'll, I'll put a name to each of these. Um, the first one we will say that this is the case when they, um, they have, the two uh, linear graphs have one unique solution. And you'll see this in exam uh, papers all over the place. These, these ones here have one unique solution. Okay, they cross over once. This one here has no solutions. And this one here has an infinite number of solutions. Infinite. I'll spell it right eventually. Because every point is actually the same as every other point. So it has an infinite number of solutions. And we can see that these two, um, these two down the bottom here, they actually have the same gradient but a different y-intercept, whereas the previous one doesn't have the same gradient. And so what we're going to do is we're going to um, look at uh, the types of situations that um, occur when these three things are, are coming up. And we can use matrices, which I'll show you a little bit later. So now let's go back to the notes. So the first scenario is that we have no solution. So that means this one up here, that means that they're parallel. And I think that's what exactly we'll say. Simultaneous linear equations have no solution. The two straight lines are parallel. I guess how do we determine if they're parallel? One, we can do that just by simply rearranging the equations into y equals mx plus c. And for both of these equations and find out that the, the m is exactly the same on both. Um, you can't find out the gradient of a line unless it's in this form y equals mx plus c. So this one here, you have to divide by two. This one here, you have to rearrange to get y equals. So we can see that both of those are, are exactly the same. The gradients are exactly the same. And I guess the other thing that we need to know is with this is that the y-intercepts are not the same. So C1 does not equal C2. And I guess we could prove that by finding out the y-intercept in, in this case over here. Um, another way of uh, finding out whether the, uh, 
equation uh, the gradients are the same is that we can actually use the determinant and again you don't really need to know why but I'm happy to explain this uh, explain why to you so if you want to know just ask me sometime in class but if the determinant is zero the determinant being this thing that we looked at when we were doing this simultaneous equations um, you know using matrices this bit here AD minus BC that's the determinant and if the determinant is zero we'll get one divided by zero which will explode it never works and so therefore they will have no solutions to this so how do you work out if the gradients are the same if the determinant of the matrix is zero so let's put this these uh, two equations into a matrix one two uh, two and oh hang on I've just got to rearrange this to make sure that it's in the same format as that one I'm going to add x to both sides x plus 2y equals negative 2 so 1x plus 2y I'm not going to worry about the all, all the rest of it like the times x y bit because I don't need any of that I just need the determinant of this one here so uh, 1 2 1 2 remembering that the matrix is normally a b c d and the determinant is always AD minus BC. That's the determinant. If that is zero, if that's zero, then there is no solutions to this equation. So if the determinant is zero, it's one times two uh, minus one times two. Uh, it is in this case, um, and that's what I guess we're proving that before because they do have the same gradients. So um, the determinant was zero. So therefore, we can say that there is no inverse um, matrix, and therefore we can say that this these two lines here are parallel. Okay. So um, the two ways of doing it. One is to use just I guess our old year ten, year eleven, just rearranging the equation to find the gradient. The other one is using matrices. I prefer using matrices because I think it's a cleaner way of doing things. It does it takes far less mucking around um, than than this one up here, but it doesn't it doesn't really matter either way. Um, you need to know both because they could give you some multiple choice questions, which you know mean you know need to know either way. But it really doesn't matter which way you you solve it. So the second one we'll have a look at is the infinite number of solutions. Again, these lines have the same gradient, and but the only uh, addition to this one is that these also have the same y-intercept okay again how do we determine if they have the, the same line you can do it one of two ways the first one is just by simply rearranging the equation and you'll get the same y-intercept and the same gradient okay and you can do that if, if you want to on these two graphs and you'll find out that they are exactly the same to be honest I would just look at these and go if you multiply that one by two you'll get that one but sometimes they're, they're not as easy as that um, particularly because they actually get rid of a 6 and make it an M or make it a, a, a letter and that makes it a bit harder which we'll see a bit later. So the second method which is probably one I want to focus on a little bit more because I feel like the first method you could probably do by yourself with too, without too much help. The second method is again if the determinant is zero, the determinant of the matrix is zero that means we will have no solutions. It will be like one of these two here if the determinant is zero you'll either get no solutions or an infinite number of solutions we won't actually know which one but we can sub them back into the equation and find out so I'm gonna find out the determinant of this these two lines here so 2 and negative 3 into the matrix and 4 and negative 6 into the matrix and I get the determinant of zero so therefore um, these two lines are uh, they don't have any solutions which means there either are no solutions or an infinite number of solutions. The only other thing I'd need to do is um, the y-intercept. And I can see from this graph here, if I you know, cross out the 2x and cross out the 4x, I'm going to get y equals negative 1 for both of them. So therefore, it will have the same gradient, which is proved by this. m1 does equal m2, and C1 does equal C2 by um, so, you know, subbing it back into the equation and uh, finding out the answer. Okay, the third type is when there's one unique solution. Now basically this one is the one where the other two ones don't work. So if you don't have the same gradient then uh, you have an, a one unique solution. So basically the, the graphs can't be parallel, they can't have the same gradient, so that's just what we would do. We would 
you know, rearrange them to you know, find y equals mx plus c for both of them. This is in method one. And you would notice that the, the gradients are not the same for both of them. Another way of doing that is to look at the determinant of the matrix, you know, 2 times 2 minus 5 times negative 3, and it ends up being 19, which is not 0. So therefore, we know that this, these sets of equations will actually have a solution. So the, this last one here, the determinant is not 0, so therefore M1 does not equal M2, and it really doesn't matter whether C1 equals C2 or not, that, that's irrelevant for this one. So in summary, the three ways, the three things that we can do for um, linear graphs are one unique solution, no solutions, an infinite number of solutions. And you can find that out by exploring the gradient. One of two ways. One, one method is to just you know, go back to year 10 or year 11 and rearrange to find y equals mx plus c for both of them and, and then sort of equate them to each other. Well, the second one is to define the, de the determinant of, how do I spell? The determinant of the matrix, which is A, B, C, D. So A, D minus B, C. And if the determinant equals zero, the gradients are exactly the same. If the determinant doesn't equal zero, then we have one of these situations up here when we've got it crossing over once. So in the, that, that sort of sums up the, the theory of it. Um, in the next video, I'll apply it. Um, and to be honest, if you didn't understand the previous three videos, it's probably not going to matter that much. The thing that you really do need to know is how to do the, the, the questions in the next video, because that's, you know, I guess, where the exam questions are. It's, of course, it's always good to understand everything um, about all of the, the content, because they might throw your curveball in the exam, something that I haven't specifically uh, taught you, but you can sort of you know, work it out by you know, using your maths knowledge. Um, so it's good to know everything, but really the, the key is, is, is knowing how to do the next couple of questions, and that's what I'll be doing in the next video answering these three exam questions. So uh, thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you next time.